plumberparts.co.uk. Another fantastic drive shot from me. Welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. This is an Ask the Plumber video and today you're going to ask the plumber questions. Sorry we've not uploaded for a couple of weeks. Everything's going mad, it's winter. If you're a plumber and it's winter, you know what I mean. There's a couple of you having a go at each other on Facebook about that as well. It brings me to the thing that Facebook, right, our Facebook personage, as it were, we're going to try and slow that down. We're moving all our stuff over to our Plumber Parts Facebook page. You can find the link to that if you click here on the video now. Go there, click the like button, and then you'll be updated as normal with everything that we're doing. So, let's have a look at the first question we've got today. But first, let's pound a few more balls out there. Take two of that, by the way. <laughs> right, so our first question is from Marcus Davey. He was going on about how to drain systems out. He said, it's a nice explanation. In... <laughs> Nice explanation, cheers. Sorry, I don't know why that's got me. In place of two valves, I have a three port valve. Would draining down need this setting to the mid position? Marcus, you're right. And also, I love your Zippy sort of avatar you got there. Big fan of Zippy and Bungle and George and all the people from Rainbow. My kind of era. Uh, now you're getting an idea of how old I am. Yeah, if you're draining a central heating system down, uh, it's always a good idea to make sure obviously everything's switched off, make sure the water's all switched off, and make sure any two port or three port valves are latched in the open position. Especially a three port valve, because they'll sit in the middle, they'll drain the hot water coil out then, and also all your radiators as well, or whatever they're serving. So that's a really, really good idea, a very relevant question. Well done, Marcus. Um, a star for you, and a cookie, well done. Then we had on our Twitter account, if you want to follow us on Twitter, just click on the link. Uh, Miss Natalie Woodhall, she said, is about to balance, not my body, weird, my radiators. The B3 training paying off. I don't know what she's on about. I've got the leather man out and I'm good to go, right? So this is when we weren't involved here, right? But then suddenly, at Plumber Parts, great DVDs on YouTube. Don't want to burst your bubble, Natalie, but they're not DVDs. We might sell a DVD, but I don't know when. Very handy. I'm freaking wasted as a fitness instructor. I say, that's really, really good. Well done. You're, you know, I'm sure you'll be fine. Ah, uh, it didn't work. Still, like, warm at the bottom of the rad. We're on for a weekend flush out. Before you do that, turn off all the other radiators in the house, but leave that one on. Turn your pump speed up to three. Make sure that there's no air in that radiator. Make sure the lock shield's open. Make sure the TRV pin, if there is one on there, is loose, and that will allow everything through. If it doesn't get hot then, you're probably right. What you also could do is turn off each valve, remove the radiator off the wall. I don't know if you're gonna need help from anyone to do that, um, but take it outside, flush it out, like we showed you on how to remove sludge from a radiator. So I hope that helps. Any more problems, obviously, let us know. Hassan Kamal. I hope I've said your name right, Hassan. What if the hot slash cold water taps are obscured behind nearby cabinets and very awkward to get to? Would a Rothenberger wrench do it? Now, this is a comment that he put on our video on how to install the washing machine. The thing is, right, is plumbing isn't easy, and this is the reason why. People put stuff behind stuff, and stuff's hard to get at when it's behind something, isn't it? You know, you're just gonna have to dig deep, mate. You're now trying to be a plumber, and you're trying to get behind a cupboard to sort something out, and it's just a nightmare, it's just how it is. You have to be Houdini sometimes to be a plumber. You're now trying to get behind a cupboard and you're realising that plumbing ain't so easy, bruv. James Carpenter comes in with a question. How do you know when the pump is not strong enough? I have an oil-fired central heating and both pumps are set to level three. Could I replace with stronger pumps? I'm assuming if you've got two pumps, you must have a combi oil boiler like a Grant or something like that. You can upgrade the pumps on them. Uh, if you've got a 1550, which is like the lowest speed of pump you can get, look on the end of the pump itself and it'll tell you what its UPS is. So it'll either say something like UPS 1550 or you get a 1560 or a 1650 or a 1660 I think that's off the top of my brains but really the highest one you're going to get is a 1660 turn that up to three you'll get really good flow around most of the system remember to upgrade as well to a decent manufacturer of pump because the newer pumps that are coming out now are so much better at supplying water around the system and they also save you a bit of energy as well but if you look into it deeply I imagine that is about enough over a year to charge your phone for three seconds. That's harsh. Colin Draycott sent us a message on Facebook, uh, at our Facebook page, not our normal old Facebook, at our new page. Click on the link to go to that, all right? Colin Draycott, I have a new vertical radiator, heating up except bottom right-hand corner. I have bled and balanced the system. Any ideas? 
stupidly, we hadn't read his message properly. We were like, sludge, it's got to be, innit? We didn't read that it was a new radiator. Quick as a flash, Colin Draycott comes back at us. Brand new radiator. Didn't like, no smiley face, no wink, nothing. Pretty harsh there, Colin. You know, thinking you might be getting a bit grumpy now. We're sort of wondering, shall we help him or not? <laughs> we're only joking, mate. <laughs> ah, but then we thought, oh, hold on, it's a brand new vertical radiator. This is where you have to start thinking about vertical radiators, because they've got such a high amount of water in them. The system is fed up from the bottom or from the top, wherever, you can get a trickling effect, okay? Often they have a small diverter valve in them that you have to twist at the bottom inlet of the vertical radiator that will allow flow to be evenly distributed around the radiator, and so the whole vertical rad gets evenly watered. Uh, so that's basically what that is. You're probably going to have to take the valve off and have a look or get your instructions and see if there's one there. If they haven't supplied one, sometimes it'll be like a rubber thing you have to insert inside the radiator itself. So keep an eye out for that. This is the first time I've ever done this in my life. Got a couple of big ups out there. Hold tight, screw boys. Blah, blah. We've got Tom and James at Leicester College. Okay, they want to say, like, hi. And I'm saying hi back, innit? Tom and James, um, hello. Uh, unlucky, mate. Leicester, I don't know. I've never been there. Is it good or bad? Good night out? Bad night out? Right, now, we've also got another one. Hi, chap. I'm a Scotsman who hates cricket. I mean, it, what Scotsman likes cricket? Even though, I mean, I think most of the Scottish cricket team are Australians, like expats. Anyway, uh, a game played for three days. Actually, you mean five days, I think. But no someone wins however I do like your YouTube videos well, thanks very much can you give my son a holler in your next YouTube video which is what we're gonna do now his name is Matthew McClendon I hope I've said your name right there Matt uh, he's a Coventry kid if you have time to read my only two tweets uh, you'll understand what I've asked it's not something I'd normally do my Twitter name is Coventry Plumbing and I'm one of your Twitter followers kindest regards Paul I've got about another 70 balls to go through so I'm gonna do that now do you want to watch me hit it 70 times probably not Going as well. So there we go. Seventy balls hit into the ether. I hope you've enjoyed today's Plum Parts the Code UK video. Oh, knackered. Remember, you can subscribe to us on Twitter and on Facebook. Just click on these bits here. Uh, also, subscribe to us on YouTube, and then you'll get automatic updates when we put a new video up. Whoa! If you need any more help, any more information, comment on this video or contact us through any of the other bits we've just told you about. Hope you enjoyed today's vid, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! Plumberparts.co.uk Oscar Plumber!